name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're looking at something I picked up from the uh, Stratford Bike Show literally last year, god this is a year ago, I, I bought these because I saw them and I was like the guy wanted a tenner for them, they're from a BSA, what BSA I don't know and you know, old old school stuff really isn't my um, thing, we will, I will get into that, the older I get the more I want to get into the even older stuff um, but these are uh, fork and blade rods, or split, uh, not split rods, um, yeah, fork and blade rods. Basically what you do is, is that these two rods sit on the same crank pin and are in line with each other, as you can see. So the Spitfire, the Merlin engine that was, the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that was in the Spitfire, the Hurricane, uh, a couple of bombers, the P-51, stuff like that, uh, and the Griffin and all the other variants of that basic engine um, had these kind of rods they are different because even though these are for a unit construction crankshaft which means that you have your two uh, webs your two throws of your crankshaft and then you have to drive in the crank pin very much like a two stroke um, or small four strokes like one two fives and two fifties and stuff like that um, you know these are complete rods as you can see we have to press the pin in where the Merlin actually had splits so the Merlin had for all three um, big ends they had to have a split and it's the bearing arrangement as well because the shell bearings oh god that was complicated uh, <coughs> but they held up pretty good to the old Spitfire ones uh, this is an old school thing. Why would you want to do this? Well, when we talk about balance and stuff, a lot of people say, oh, boxers, boxers are perfectly balanced. Well, boxers are not perfectly balanced um, because their rods are like this, in a sense. Even though they share a crank pin, like very many V8s and V6s and stuff, you have two rods sharing a crank pin. And because they are offset, if you see that this, the main arm of the rod and that rod there, they are not in the same plane. They are basically... That would be in the same plane, these are off, they would be offset. What does this do? Well, this creates what we call a rocking couple. So basically, there's your crankshaft. Just imagine we've got a rod here, and I can't do it because I ain't got seven hands, and a rod here. Every time a rod fires, so it goes bang, it makes the rod want to deflect like this. And then when this, a crankshaft, and when this rod fires, or cylinder fires, it makes a crankshaft do this. So it's constantly doing this. And we call that a rocking couple. Why? Because there's two of them. <laughs> and they are rocking. It's making the crankshaft rock. Uh, same thing for um, BMWs. Same thing for stuff like uh, Evos. You know, um, yeah, Evo, not Evos. Fucking Impressors. They are very close. If you look at an Impressor, the crankshaft webs are very, very thin. That's because they're trying to pull um, these ro uh, reciprocating masses closer and closer in plane together. But there's always going to be this rocking couple effect as the crankshaft goes back and fires and that one fires and that one fires and that one fires. Um, so you get this rocking couple. Even if, it's, even if it's on the same crank pin, you basically cause the crankshaft to do this because... The bearings are placed like so for the crankshaft, or oh, you can't really see that, like so for your rod, but you have one rod offset and another rod coming this way sharing a crank pin. So even when you fire there, you're still going to get this torsional rocking backwards and forwards, which is not ideal. It's also the same when you're actually throwing these masses and trying to stop the piston when it gets to TDC and then pull it back again. So. Um, this kind of split and fork rod was used, uh, or blade, there's another word for it, is a blade and a fork, so that one being that one being the blade. This one's bent well out of shape, I don't know how well you're going to make that out, but she's proper her duped, um, as in it doesn't fit in that way, and it only just fits in that way. The maximum reach of these two is just over 90 degrees, that's, where are we? That's about 90 degrees, just past 90 degrees, and the smallest they get is, I don't know, 35, something shit like that. Um, they will never touch that, the, basically, they will always stop shy of that, so they'll move within a range like this. Um, there are other rods where, basically, there's a uh, the big end is actually positioned on the side. We'll do a video about that. Yes, I'm fully aware of them. They're using a lot of diesel applications and tractors back in the day. Um... But, you know, why are these not used anymore? It seems like a good idea to try and align everything. It also means you don't have to offset your cylinder head banks. If you look at V8s, 
their four cylinders will be slightly offset. They will not be all in the same plane. Um, the problem with this is that it's weak. You can see that these rods are fucking long. Um, and I think this was from a litre bike. I'm not quite sure. Someone in the comments will tell me what bike this is from. Thank you very much when you do. Uh, we've got some look, look like phosphor bronze inserts for the small ends uh, with little drainage ho with um, little drainage holes at the top. And uh, yeah, the, one of the problems with these is they're quite weak. So what will happen? This is actually quite peculiar because it has this bridge on the bottom. Obviously, they were having a problem. There you go. You can see that little bridge there. You can obviously have a problem with them. Um, forking out or forking in if they fork in that's terrible because what it does it'll nip this other one it'll nip this other one you can see there's quite a lot of clearance there for thermal expansion um although these aren't new so maybe that's bigger than it should be and uh yeah one of the problems is is that they can crack here here you can see there's all this extra material which also makes these rods different weights i don't exactly know how much these rods well let's get the scales out well, my big scales are fucking broken. I'll probably just weigh these and then put the numbers on the screen. <coughs> but there will be a big weight difference because you're pretty much doubling up that. They've tried the hardest to do half and half, but with the bridge and all this extra material here, you can see that there's some fillets, uh, radii on the inside of these and on the inside of these, and this big one here that's trying to relieve the stress. But nah. these are for low power applications, and back when this bike was made, it didn't have that much horsepower, especially for a litre engine. Uh, again with the Merlin, you know, it might be 1500 horsepower when they made the last ones um, But it's 1500 horsepower from 26 litres, which means, you know, that's a massive massive engine that makes only 1500 horsepower Great for the time, don't get me wrong um, But yeah, the fact of the matter is you won't really see these anymore ever because it's just simply well, it's not achievable the rods would have to be beefed up and when things go higher and higher and higher and higher RPM you put more and more stresses on these components and your con rods are one of you know they what connects the reciprocating bit to the rotational bit and when you try and convert from one motion to another there is always going to be you know some crazy forces and your con rods are the ones that basically have to take that <coughs> excuse me but what we'll do is we'll clean these up and I'll put these on the wall or something because they are a cool thing to see. And for a tenner, for a video, you know, so you can see stuff like this, um, it's quite cool. And, uh, you know, old, old school, when they used to paint things, if, I don't know if they used to paint these, I don't know if someone's done this. But, uh, yeah, we'll clean these up and uh, take a look at them in the future. And we'll probably talk more about this. And one of these days, I'm going to get an old bike so we can strip it apart and look at some really, really old stuff. The problem is, is that these fucking bikes cost much bloody money um, for what they are. You know what I mean? They're more of a collector's piece than anything else. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.